what are the tangential components of electric field intensity et1 and et2 so et1 and et2 are continuous across direct interface so mathematically what does it mean that means et1 is equal to et2 or in terms of vector form it is an12 cross e1 minus e2 is equal to 0 where an12 is a unit vector perpendicular to the interface from region 1 to region 2 this is the first boundary condition the tangential component of electric field intensity is continuous across the dielectric interface et1 is equal to et2 or in its vector form it is an12 cross e1 minus e2 is equal to 0 what is the second boundary condition the normal components of electric flux density that is dn1 and dn2 has got a discontinuity of magnitude rho s across the interface like if we discuss if we consider electric field vector in two regions e1 and e2 then this will become et1 en1 et2 en2 instead if you consider electric electric flux density vectors d1 and d2 then this would become dt1 dn1 and this would be dt2 and dn2 so the normal components of electric flux density are not continuous across the interface like the tangential component of electric field intensity but they are discontinuous by magnitude of rho s so the normal components of electric flux density has got a discontinuity of magnitude rho s across the interface so dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s or in vector form this boundary condition can be represented as an12 dot d1 minus d2 is equal to rho s Boundary conditions topic is one of the important topics for both electrostatics and magnetostatics where you can expect a simple one mark or two marks question and this is one of the frequently asked uh, questions in the in gate. So far there have been questions on only ET1, ET2 and DN1 minus DN2 is equal to rho s but in future you can expect a question on the vector form also. So it is good to know the vector form of these boundary conditions. We can get a simple one mark question. Like I, like I said, rho s is the surface charge density at the interface. So when there is some charge at the interface, don't think that this charge is because of the charge that is present in the regions. It is not possible because these two regions are dielectrics. That means they are insulators. If they are insulators, you can't expect any charge to present on this. So it is the free charge that we place at the interface separating two regions and then we try to measure and find out the relationship between the tangential and the normal components of electric field intensity as well as electric flux density okay if there is no charge at the interface that is called charge free interface charge free interface if it is a charge free interface then a rho s will become equal to zero rho s will become equal to zero when rho s is equal to zero when rho s is equal to zero then we can say dn1 is equal to dn2 otherwise in general boundary conditions relate et1 and et2 as et1 is equal to et2 and dn1 and dn2 as dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s okay so dn1 is equal to dn2 occurs only when rho s is equal to 0 so in the examination if he asks you to find out the relation between dn1 and dn2 or if he asks you what is the relation between dn1 and dn2 then you should first choose dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s only when rho s is equal to 0 dn1 will become equal to dn2 so you will solve many problems using these two boundary conditions et1 et2 and dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s but when you are solving problems you in boundary conditions and if it doesn't tell you about the kind of interface that is considered whether it is a normal interface or a charge free interface then take rho s is equal to 0 that means then take dn1 is equal to dn2 otherwise 
if he exp if he if he explicitly gives you some value for rho s, then don't take rho s equal to zero. Use dn norm as dn two is equal to rho s. And also, when there is a question related to the vectored form of electric field, and if you are unable to solve the problem using this condition, e t one equal to e t two or dn norm minus dn two is equal to rho s, then take the help of the vectored form of boundary conditions. In fact, these vectored form boundary conditions are the boundary conditions that 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 need to be used when solving problems. And these you will you will have noticed these are approximate forms of these boundary conditions. In fact, you, uh, strictly speaking, you should not use these these two forms. You should use only vectored form for simplicity and for the ease of solving problems. We take the help of them, and you will see that it is not actually et1 is equal to et2. It is only mod et1 that is equal to mod et2, and mod dn1 minus mod dn2 is equal to mod rho s. Without loss of generality, we just take dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s. Also observe that even though array dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho s, strictly speaking, this is not a correct form because dn1 and dn2 they are vectors, and if you take the difference of two vectors, you will never get a scalar value, right? So even though array dn1 minus dn2, do understand that dn1 and dn2 these are not vectors in this case; they are only the magnitudes of electric flux density in two regions, region one and region two. Now, so let us consider that electric field in region one is E1 and electric field in region two is E2. And E1 makes an angle theta 1 with the interface. E2 makes angle theta 2 with the interface. Say E1 and E2 makes angles theta 1 and theta 2 with the interface, respectively. If this is theta 1, what is this angle? This is also theta 1. Alternate angles are equal. If this is theta 2, what is this angle? This is theta 2. Why? Is it alternate angles equal? No. It is corresponding angles that are equal. So, what is the relation between mod E T one mod E one now? Mod E T one is equal to mod E one cos theta one. Mod E N one is equal to mod E one sin theta one. Similarly, mod E T two is equal to Mod e two cos theta two and mod e n two equal to mod e two sin theta two, right? And consider it as a charge-free interface. What what will happen to the boundary conditions? Boundary conditions become mod e t one is equal to mod e t two and mod d n one is equal to mod d n two, right? So. Boundary conditions now become mod e t one is equal to mod e t two, and mod d n one is equal to mod d n two. Mod e t one is mod e one cos theta one, that is equal to mod e two cos theta two. And can I write mod e n one as epsilon r two by epsilon r one into mod e n two? We know mod e n one as mod e one sine theta one, which is equal to epsilon r two by epsilon r one into mod e two sine theta two. You can take this as equation number one and this as equation number two. Divide two by one. What do you get if you divide two by one? Then you get tan theta one as epsilon r two by epsilon r one to tan theta two, which means tan theta one by tan theta two. C equal to epsilon r two by 
epsilon r1. Put two stars and write down that theta 1 and theta 2 are the angles made with the interface. Angles made with the interface. Very important. So, if in the examination he gives you the angles made by E1, E2 with the interface, or if he gives you one angle made with the interface, and if he asks you to find out the other angle made with the interface, then you can use the relation tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 is equal to epsilon r2 by epsilon r1. So far in gate, there has been no question on this particular concept so this year you can expect a question in using this relation between theta 1 and theta 2 as tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 is equal to epsilon r2 by epsilon r1 often the, uh, in the examination in, in, in IES and PSUs there have been questions where uh, instead of giving the angles made with the interface, so he gives you the angles made with the normal to the interface and he still uses the same notation theta 1 and theta 2. Then don't get carried away by this notation. Check whether these are the angles made with the interface or with the normal to the interface. So if you find that these angles given in the problem are the angles made with the normal to the interface, then either change this equation or you change the values that need that that you get for the actual theta 1 and theta 2.